Hello Hattrickers, welcome to episode 75 of Let's Play Hattrick in San Marino within Takelba Hill. Today we start on the training page and we are serving that Yakukiva popped from formidable to outstanding. And he now looks like this, a bait player, which will be transferred back to his original owner once he starts seeing a need for him in his squad. But uh, certainly should be possible to rake in a bit of a profit on this guy as well. So that's a good start. And Nikolai actually popped already to solid playmaking. So very nice to see. If you look at the HGMS potential, it's 2100. If we look at the sheet, you'll actually see that he's on paper the most talented player in the squad right now. Even ahead of Sanotti here. Camalini did have his uh, birthday and is now 20 years of age. And Nikolai will have to check out his age as well because he's beyond 21 years now. Solid playmaking is marked here in the sheet. Hopefully we'll see Iko Becker. He should actually be weak as well. So let me just update that. You should see these guys starting to contribute to the midfield rating and it could potentially lead us to better results in the league as well once we can start in using these guys like directly in the starting lineup along with the other playmakers in the team. We do have to note that the wages of this guy is all already 340,000 Danish corner that is 34,000 euros so it's uh, taking its toll on the economy with the half-baked wingers but that's a situation we'll have to deal with. We definitely have to step up our game in the skill trading business really soon. That takes a little preparation that I haven't done yet unfortunately. This week's scouts call was uh, messed up by me. I failed to record the actual call properly so Here's the guy we pulled this week, Andy Guidi. He's actually 16 years old, but he's a relatively young 16 year old. He's quick and he has passable defending. So we want to try him out in the defense alongside Bonifaci. So we have set him in the opposite back slot for now, hoping that he is quite high in his defending skill. And then we'll try to see if there's anything good in the rest of his skills. We don't field 11 players in order to reveal more skills quickly. During the midweek, we did play the first friendly against the team in Denmark. And as usual, we try to get extra time to get extra training. And we managed to do so in this game, having extra time, no injuries whatsoever. And we managed to swap out a few players, especially in the Danish team. Soon, we will have to do the same with playmaking skill traits. Do pay attention to the fact that you can actually gain extra training if you have the opportunity to to set up extra time consistently. You don't always get it, but when you do, it's just really lovely. On Sunday evening, we played against Lokomotiv Latendicht in one of the most important matches this season in order to try to turn it around. If we look at the things here, you'll see that they were actually ahead of us in this match and they were kind of favorites with 2.03 expected goals for the home team and 1.79 for us. If we look at the tactical approach from Interkelbeheu, I feel like I kind of made a mistake going for pressing and solid because I was actually hoping that we could perhaps outscore Latendicht in this one, but it may have ended up saving us. We were quite lucky getting four chances as opposed to Lokomotiv Latendicht, two chances at home. And it might have helped us that I forgot to change this little setting in the tactics. So a lucky point here. Let's take a look at the star performances. You'll see Franchi only seven stars. Best in form at the moment from the core players. You'll see solid form for Franchi only seven stars and Antoine. Maso Sanotti, solid form as well, but performing a little better in the central defense. It's starting to look pretty decent with our core players, and hopefully soon we'll be able to play Sanotti in the midfield as well. We would like to see him further up the field, that's for sure. If we look at the league table, we are still quite low, still behind Latendicht, but the next two rounds we will be playing the bot team all the way at the bottom, Fiorentino RSM, and hopefully we will be having 11 points after round eight, where we have the return match against the Latendicht. And hopefully by then we can start consolidizing our place within the upper half in the series. We're not that far behind, to be honest. And Ace of Sonfri did beat Elise two goals to nothing. The top match between Mamante and Berlin United. And I was a little surprised to see Mamante winning by such a big mark. And if you look at the ratings here, you'll see the home team being quite far ahead of Berlin United when you look 
look at it like this with a pretty big midfield advantage. Outstanding pressing from Berlin United simply wasn't enough to stop the home team in this one. So they'll be looking quite good in the hunt for promotion, Mamante. Six games played, six games won, and they're still in the Copa Guatia. Pretty nice from Mamante, for sure. We are trying to see if we can identify a few skill traits and, and also if we look at the training estimation, if we enable, where is he? Dwayne, Dwayne Dove. He should be less than two weeks away from a pop in playmaking, making him supernatural and hopefully we'll be able to see a little profit from him because we have to get rid of this guy pretty soon. Let's check it out. Supernatural, go with the powerful spec. Yeah, perhaps we might see at least his uh, investment value you being returned a little better at least once he pops but if you look at these uh, transfer compares from last season actually they're quite far into last season we might actually want to remove this little tick here and check it out and see okay we could potentially come out of this uh, this whole history with Dwayne Dove without a loss I hope so at least that's all for this week thank you so much for watching I hope you have a great weekend hat trick and I'll see you guys very soon Take care.